I recently completed my first IoT project, and since then I was eager to work on more projects involving internet connectivity. One area I wanted to explore was using web APIs. What is a web API? A web API, application programming interface, is typically used to enable interaction between the client, such as web browser, mobile app, or client running on Arduino microcontroller, and the server that provides data or services. I was contemplating which web API to test. I don't want to make yet another video showing how you can pull the number of subscribers for a YouTube channel or display the current weather. I noticed there was not a lot of videos on pooling stock exchange data. And since finance related videos tend to have a higher CPM, I decided to create a video like this to test it, killing two birds in one stone. Somebody recommended Alpha Vantage as a provider that allows you to request few stock quotes per day free of charge. Here is their website. To be able to pull data from this site, you need to request a free API key, which you would then use in your HTTP request in your code. You can get it here. Let's fill in the questionnaire using my top secret email account. And here it is. I'm obscuring this key as I do not want you to use my key. Please generate your own. Now that we had a key, let's browse through the documentation. There is plenty of information here. For instance, you can find sample code for a variety of platforms. Unfortunately, Arduino is not one of them. Ultimately, I need to find a sample HTTP request to get stock quote data for a single stock. I think this is it. Let's test it in Windows by running this request in the command prompt using curl command. We are using demo API key here. It works. You can see we get a lot of control data first, but then we get the actual IBM stock information. This is not exactly what I wanted. I needed a single quote for the time I executed the HTTP request, but instead I got prices from several days. This is because in the request I use time series daily option. After digging around, I realize I need to change it to global quote. Let's try it. This time I got exactly what I wanted. In this response, we had the stock symbol, stock price, and the change percent. So how do we bring this request into the Arduino realm? We start by having a microcontroller, in my case an Arduino Revision 4 Wi-Fi board, connected to my home access point. Then in an Arduino IDE we create the code which contains the HTTP request to pull data for any given stock using our free API key. When this code gets executed, the request is sent through the access point via HTTPS to the AlphaVantage server hosting the web API software. Based on the request, a response is generated in JSON format and sent back to Arduino, which outputs it to the serial monitor through the serial interface. After running the first tests, I realized that I might have issues with using the Arduino Revision 4 board. It is fairly new and there are some library compatibility issues and I do not think it handled HTTPS requests very well. To complete this project, I replaced it with ESP8266 microcontroller. It is the first time I used it. So as much as I wanted to use my new Arduino, I had to go with this board. Let's plug it in for later use and explain what JSON format is and how the web API uses it. JSON JavaScript object notation is a lightweight data interchange format that is easy for humans to read and write, and easy for machines to parse and generate. It is primarily used to transmit data between a server and the web application as text. This format is language independent, it is used in nearly all programming languages. JSON data is represented as key value pairs. I will use a simple example to store user information. The basic structures in JSON are object, an ordered collection of key value pairs and closed in curly braces. Each key is a string and closed in a double quotes, followed by a colon and then the value. Array is an ordered list of values and closed in a square brackets. Values can be of any type, string, number, object, array, true, false or null. 
It gets more complicated when you nest data in JSON, meaning objects and arrays can contain other objects and arrays. This allows us to create JSON file containing data for multiple users, which is substantially more complex than the simple example we started with. The JSON for the stock information we will use is straightforward and fortunately comprises key value pairs only, with no nesting. Let's start writing the code. Here are the two libraries that we'll need. The first one provides functions for Wi-Fi connectivity on the ESP8266. The second one enables secure HTTPS connections. They come pre-installed with ESP board definitions, so you do not need to install them separately in the Arduino IDE. Next, we have the access point credentials and the API key we generated on the Alpha Vantage site. Let's also define the stock symbol we want to get the quote for. I started with IBM, but in later examples I also used Apple stock symbol. We also need to define the Alpha Vantage server we will be pulling data from. We need to define a Wi-Fi secure client. In the setup function we open the serial monitor, output the information of the access point we want to connect to, and initiate the connection. When the connection is established, we output the IP address assigned to our microcontroller. Finally, let's run the custom function to retrieve the stock quote. Here's the definition of that custom function. We use the setInsecure method to simplify HTTPS connections by disabling certificate verification. Then we connect to Alpha Vantage server over port 443. First, we construct a URL string to include the HTTP request. Afterwards, we issue a get command to the Alpha Vantage server using this URL as a parameter. The payload string stores the JSON response. We collect this data by reading the response line by line and appending it to that string. Once all the lines have been read, we display the complete response in the serial monitor. When we capture the entire response, we can close the client. If the client connectivity was never successfully established, we output appropriate error message. We are ready to take this code for a spin. Let's power a microcontroller and start loading the code to it. Done. The microcontroller initiates a connection to the access point, which is established with this IP address. Here is the response from the Alpha Vented server. Just like in Windows test, we first get HTTP header data followed by stock quote information. This time I requested data for Apple. It would be great if we could get rid of HTTP header data, so we end up with just the information that is of interest to us. If you look closely at the response in the serial monitor, you will notice that there is an empty line between the header data and the JSON response. We can detect that blank line and disregard all lines of response until that line, then process only the lines that come after and add them to the payload string. Let's go back to our custom function and find the spot where such an action can be performed. It should be right before we start building the payload string. So in this section of code we keep reading the response line by line without performing any action on the data read until we encounter a blank line. When this happens we exit a while loop. Then we carry on reading the response but this time adding each line to the payload. Let's reflect the change in the Arduino IDE. Now we can reload the code and see if it worked. Loading the code to ESP microcontrollers takes much longer than to Arduino boards. Finished. Let's wait for the code to connect. And this time we receive the JSON response only. Having that JSON response, we can parse it and extract the data that we want. Parsing such a large string would be a bit messy. But fortunately, there is a dedicated library for handling JSON file formats that does all that for us. This line creates a dynamic JSON document object named doc with a capacity of 1 kilobyte, which will be used to store and manipulate the parsed JSON data. This line parses the JSON data contained in the payload, which would be a string containing JSON data, and loads it into the doc object. These lines effectively read and parse the JSON data, making specific values accessible for use in the program. So we can access the stock symbol using this command, 
and in the similar fashion extract values for price and change percentage. To use JSON tools we need to install and then declare the Arduino JSON library in the code. Here is the last section of the fetch stock data custom function. We want to make that function universal, so we will no longer have a constant value set for the stock symbol. We will make the stock symbol a parameter of that function, so we will be able to fetch data for any stock we pass to that function as a parameter. We no longer want to output the entire JSON response to the serial monitor, so these lines can go. Instead, we will set the buffer and deserialize our JSON response to it. Now we can extract data to the stock symbol, price and change percentage and save it in the corresponding arrays of char. We can then combine symbol, price and percentage data into a single string. I wrote the custom function to get rid of extra decimal places as we want to display just two. In that function we convert the value string to a flowed data type, then multiply it by 100, round it up and divide by 100, thus converting it to just two decimal places. Finally convert it back to string and return this as a function result. As you remember, we are executing the old fetch stock data in the setup function. Now that that function has changed, let's execute it three times for IBM, Apple and Tesla. Let's reload the code one more time. And it works. The result is not very eye-catching, so what do you say we change that? I have many devices I can output that information to, including monochrome OLED display, TFT color display, Mac 7219 8x32 display, WS2812B 8x32 matrix and DF Robot 7x71 RGB matrix. In this video I will use TFT color display. However, if enough of you request it, I can make a second video when I try to output stock quotes to other display modules that I have mentioned. Here you have a display connected to an ESP microcontroller. I will not discuss the initialization of the TFT display module for the ESP board here. Please refer to the code link in the description of this video. It is not very complicated. The code is loading and here is the result. Let's take a closer look. Let's examine the sample output and see how we can improve it. I want this to look like an info board that receives real-time updates. Writing the code to create info boxes and fill them with data so they fit on the screen usually takes forever. So I turned to my good friend ChatGPT and wrote the short description of how I wanted the data to be formatted. Are you ready for this? ChatGPT created code that worked the first time. Here is the final result. First you see the stock labels and few seconds later values show up. The next thing I wanted to do is to take function calls to fetch and display data and move them from setup function to loop function aiming at executing them every 60 seconds creating a stock quote ticker and here I hit the major roadblock. The display was refreshed every 60 seconds but with the same data. I reported this to Alpha Vantage support and they informed me that getting real-time stock exchange data is not that simple. It is heavily regulated and you have to sign up with NASDAQ and SEC. And clearly I'm not going to do that. So at this point I felt really discouraged because I created perfectly fine stock quote ticker and I will never see this in action. Fortunately, Alpha Vantage support suggested an alternative that lifted my spirit. Forex and cryptocurrencies are not subject to the same regulations and I can create a ticker for those. But this video is already 10 minutes long, so I will have to take it to the next one. Thank you for watching this video. Any support, whether through liking this video, sharing it, subscribing to my channel or providing monetary support through PayPal, Patreon or channel membership 
is always greatly appreciated. I will see you guys in my next video. Ciao.